Hello and welcome to another edition of the Vertimax Vibe podcast. My name is Al Merez. I'm going to be your host again today, being joined once again by Mike Weaving, the head men's basketball coach from Sickles High School down in Tampa, Florida. Mike, I really appreciate you joining us. My pleasure. Glad to be here. Yeah, Mike brings a great perspective to these talks because he's not only a basketball coach, but he also has a background in uh, strength and conditioning, exercise science. So he's he's able to really kind of talk about the the training side of things as well as the skill side of things. So um, when we have topics that you know kind of fit into his wheelhouse, we love to bring them on and and share some of his insights. So today we're going to talk about like a complete basketball training guide for athletes. And we're going to look at training for these guys kind of in a 360 degrees focus where we're going to look at, you know, injuries and nutrition and training and skill work and and everything that kind of goes into what it takes to to train a basketball athlete. Um, so, Coach, if you would kind of like start us off with, you know, something we don't love to talk about, but something we have to talk about, and that's injuries. Uh, unfortunately, injuries are a part of the game. Uh, we got hit by the injury bug very hard last year. We had a kid tear his ACL in a preseason game and second game of the regular season. Another kid went down with a broken wrist. Um, so unfortunately, we are I'm very schooled in injuries, especially lately. Yeah, that'll challenge your depth right away, huh? Immediately, especially at the <laughs> high school level where depth can be a challenge to begin with. Yeah, for sure. Uh, all right, so when you're like kind of – thinking about training and working with these guys. I know they run a lot, they jump a lot. So all that stuff has to kind of go into the focus of, of your training. Yeah, absolutely. Our, our biggest focus is explosiveness and cardiovascular strength. Um, I, I believe that in basketball, you got to be able to you gotta be able to do it for 32 minutes at the high school level. So whatever you do, you have to be able to do it for extended periods of time, um, as well as quick, frequent bursts where you're going from sliding to sprinting to stopping on a dime. And we try to incorporate all that stuff into our training. We do a lot of um, box jumps. We do a lot of um, broad jumps, uh, depth box jumps, standard depth jumps. Uh, we do a lot with squatting and um, box squatting, uh, a lot with split squats, and really try to focus on building up the lower body uh, explosively. But we also try to do everything in 8 to 12 repetitions so we can start to build some of that cardio. Sometimes we'll do some some running in between sets just to keep their heart rate elevated and get them to be able to jump as high as they can when they're a little bit tired. Yeah. You have to be able to, to perform when you're tired. That's definitely part of, of basketball. Sure um, is. Now, when you're looking at these guys, are you, you starting off with like an assessment before you get into your training uh, with these guys? What we do a lot of is we do a lot of like broad group training. So we do get into assessments, um, but the assessments aren't, individualized for the strength and conditioning plan that we do. It's more of an assessment to see and chart their level of improvement. We use it a little That's bit as far as what their max squats are, what their max bench presses are, how high they can jump, just so we could kind of monitor and make sure that they're putting forth the effort that they need to put forth. Um, but as far as our assessment, it's more used as a tool to, to measure gains and measure progress. So we'll do, when they get to school in August, we'll take a couple of weeks, we'll start um, talking about our preseason plan. And once September starts, we'll do an assessment week where we do like a shuttle run. We do uh, an agility test. We do a vertical jump test. We do a max squat. We do a max bench press. Uh, we do a mile run and we do a hundred yard dash. And then before the season starts in October, after we've gone through an eight week strength and conditioning program, we reassess and see where those same elements are. Now, is that the first test you mentioned? Is that kind of to see if they've been slacking all summer or if they've been putting in work or is that just kind of like setting the bar? It's more or less just kind of setting the bar because we'll have everybody in there from seniors to freshmen. So some of the freshmen will have never seen some of these exercises before and they're just kind of giving it their best shot. Um, and then some of the seniors will, will have known and, and we can go back and we can look and see where they were as juniors or as sophomores and see, make sure they've continuously made progress. Uh, but I usually use it as a fresh start baseline test for the upcoming season, not measuring them necessarily against what they've done previously. Gotcha. Okay, cool. And then when it comes to your overall like yearly plan with your guys, um, are you 
kind of looking at it in, in, in stages where you have the in season and freshly out of season, pre season, you know, kind of all that when you're yeah. practicing stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Um, like in the, in the preseason stuff, we focus a lot on, on running and getting their heart rates up along with doing those explosive lifts. Uh, we're focusing on trying to build fast twitch muscles. We're doing some injury pre- prevention stuff with uh, balance activities, BOSU ball work, mm-hmm. uh, so try to strengthen the knees and ankles as much as possible and not just honing in on those larger muscle groups along with the running because we're getting ready to get started and they're going to need to be able to run. Um, during the season, uh, we do more body weight exercises. We kind of mm-hmm. stay out of the weight room and we just, we'll, we'll keep up with our push ups, we'll keep up with our core work, we'll keep up with our sprints. Um, but it's not going to be out on the track doing distance running like we would do during the preseason, um, mainly because of, of time and fatigue with games and adjusted mm-hmm. schedules. Um, and then in this postseason, about a mo- uh, three weeks to a month after our season ends, we'll get into like our, our strength building phase where we're, we're not really running. We're not really doing a lot of the of the cardio. We're just really trying to focus on building muscle, building strength uh, so that when we do get into the fall and we start doing that conditioning stuff again, they have more of a, a strength base to start with. Cool. Now in Florida, is there stipulations or regulations as to how much you can work with these guys in the off season? Um, so we, uh, we, we can do some things as far as long as we're playing in a league, uh, like an off season league, like a summer league or a fall league, we can coach those guys in the basketball aspect of it throughout the course of those seasons. Um, and we register as a uh, U.S. amateur basketball team uh, to be able to participate mm-hmm. in those activities. Um, and as far as the strength and conditioning stuff goes, the only stipulation is that the players go through um, their health checks for the year. So they need to get um, school insurance. They need to get uh, their f- annual physical done. They need to go through some coursework online about concussions and heat-related illness and sudden cardiac arrest. So they have a, a knowledge base. But once all of that stuff is done and completed, um, they they can pretty much they can do anything that is non basketball related at any point with their coach, and then they can do the basketball specific stuff as we are participating in those off season leagues, um, and then May is our turnaround period for that paperwork. Gotcha. That's interesting. I didn't know. Uh, I wasn't familiar with the the off season leagues like that where you could actually kind of formalize a formal team and kind of keep playing. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, the state of Florida opened up to it since I had been open to it since I've been here. Um, so I've kind of just followed suit with with what's been available. Um, so we'll play in June. I think we played about twenty games over the month of June. Give them off in July and August, and then I think our fall league will start up in early, early to mid September. That's cool. It's kind of like a spring season football where you have the main season in fall and then a little shortened season. Yeah, Absolutely. it's probably even less intense than that. Like we still won't practice every day. We'll we'll practice one or two days a week. We'll condition one or two days a week while we're participating in that fall league. It's it's more just a way to kind of get some game reps in there and, and keep the kids engaged and motivated. Cool. All right. Yeah, that's interesting. Thanks for that insight. Now, um, any other kind of considerations, anything you think about when you're talking about your team? Are you focusing on you know, sleep, nutrition, kind of hitting them all with, with everything? Um, we, we definitely discuss those things. We discuss nutrition. We discuss sleep. I don't make them record what they're eating or keep, have them keep a food journal or anything like that. But we talk about proper nutrition. We talk about how much how much they weigh, how much they want to weigh, how much protein intake they need, how much water they should be drinking. Um, uh-huh. I'm, a big, I'm a big advocate for water and staying hydrated and keeping their body regulated through hydration sure. um, and, and obviously proteins just to, especially during this time of year when we're doing a lot of, or not this time of year, but in the fall, we get into that conditioning and that lifting and that running. I'm um, just making sure they're replenishing what they lose. Awesome. All right, coach. Well, well, thank you. That's going to wrap up today. Um, some good stuff there from, from coach weaving down here at Sickles high school in Tampa, Florida. Uh, if you're looking for some more information, some more basketball training tips, be sure to check out the Vertimax website um, or the Vertimax app, you know, whether it be online or in the app store. Uh, some really good, useful stuff there. And, and we have some complete basketball training programs and, and some tips. So, Coach, as always, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you for having me. And thank you all for sticking around and listening to the Vertimax Vibe podcast. Go out and have a great day.